sacred fire burning bright. Bless us with your healing light. Sacred fire burning bright. Bless us with your healing light. Sacred fire burning bright. Bless us with your healing life. Greetings, this is Selena Fox and I am coming to you live from the hearth fire at my home in the woods in southwestern Wisconsin, USA. And one of the things that I do during the colder parts of the year, when I'm indoors more, is to work with the hearth fire. Now, not everyone has a hearth fire that they can do sacred fire with. A candle flame is something that you can work with. Or if you're at a place where you can't burn things at all, you can use a battery operated tea light as a way of connecting with sacred fire. And of course, there's the sun, which is also a form of sacred fire. And for those of you in rural locations that are able to have bonfires, that's another way of working with sacred fire. I collect um, twigs out in the forest. I gather the stalks of herbs that I've harvested and dried and keep the leaves for my work with herbal teas and um, other herbal preparations. And what do you do with the stalks? Well, I have baskets where I put things from the herb harvest that could go into a fire. I'll, I'll store them. I'll be out gathering twigs. And one of the great things about working with a hearth fire is that it, you can feed it, you can scry on it, you can sing to it, and there's warmth, there's light, and there's ancient tradition. So one way of working with a hearth fire is getting some twigs, calling to mind something that you want to let go of to dispel from your life. Put that intention into the twigs, honor the fire, and then cast the twigs into the fire. And as they catch fire, imagine what you're releasing being released. And you might have a rhythm instrument to help that process. And now they're catching fire. Cleanse away. Dispel, cleanse away, dispel, cleanse away, dispel. And as you watch the fire, and I cast a few more herbal twigs into the fire, if there is something that you wish to release from your life, I invite you to call that to mind. Burn away, cleanse away, burn away, cleanse away, burn away, cleanse away. Burn away, cleanse away, and imagine it being dispelled, burned away energetically from yourself, your life. And then after you've spent some time watching those herbs, those twigs, 
literally burning away. Spend a few moments gazing into the fire and I invite you to scry into the fire for a few moments as I shake my system and pay attention to what guidance comes to you about something very specific you can do to help manifest what you wish to release from your life. What can you do to help bring about that release from yourself, from your life? We give thanks to the sacred fire for its cleansing healing properties. We give thanks to the sacred fire for its inspiration, for guiding us and helping us in our own process of discernment about what we can do to manifest a healthier way of being in our lives. But there's a way to look with and work with the fire that, in addition to having it dispel and cleanse, can actually help you with healing. Now, what's helpful for this is if you can get some herbs with leaves. I've got some sage right here. And as you were doing before, the concept of um, letting go of stuff. Well, we're changing the focus now. This time, we're not just using twigs, we're actually using the herbs with the essential oils. This is sage, this is European sage. It has some of the same properties ceremonially in the Americas as the white sage, which is a sacred herb among a number of Native American um, groups and tribes and nations. But I'm using European sage. And for those of you who are preparing to celebrate American Thanksgiving, it's going to be a Thanksgiving in America like it's never been before. Um, we're going to be holed up in our house. So I expect I will find some way of celebrating in cyberspace since it is not safe for me to do face-to-face -face outside of this household. So I know people are struggling with this and trying to figure out how to navigate American Thanksgiving. Just be careful if you are traveling and make sure you social distance, wear a mask, wash your hands, and avoid large gatherings. And if you have to be in a queue, uh, stand in a place where you aren't right in the midst of the queue. Um, better to drive than to fly um, for many people in the U.S., but I'll kind of leave that up to you. So, healing. There clearly is a need to put out some healing prayers within the Circle Sanctuary community just in the last few days. There have been a number of people who have loved ones with COVID that are having to deal with the fact that their loved one may not survive it. And while I'm not gonna name everyone um, by name, I you know who you are. So I'm sending healing to those with loved ones, not only in the Circle Sanctuary community who have COVID that are in the final stages of life, but to those with COVID who are struggling to survive, to the loved ones that are dealing with loved ones with COVID, to the healthcare workers, the doctors, the nurses, the assistants, the chaplains, and all the others that are part of fighting this virus on the front lines. So I'm going to put some sage from my garden that I harvested and have dried. 
and I put this healing herb into this sacred fire as an offering for healing. And as I do this, I invite you to put the name, not the full name, but first name and last initial or just initials in the comment stream for healing for them. You don't have to say what it's for, but I'm doing a healing working. I mean, this week, like no other since this pandemic began, have, have I gotten so many calls from so many people in need, directly connected with us and associated with us. And I know from talking with other religious leaders and people involved in chaplaincy work and other frontline work on this pandemic, there are a lot of people hurting right now and needing healing. Just looking at the news reports about COVID spiking so intensely in so many parts of the US and other parts of the world, that itself can be very stressful and in, um, good to have some healing. So I call to the powers of sacred sage and to this healing fire to bring healing to those in need. Healing and wellness 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 to those in need. Healing to those in need. Healing to all those initials, names, those put into this feed now and when this is viewed later. Be well, be well. Be well, be well, be well. So be it. So mote it be. Blessed be. Aho, amen, ashe. Salam, shalom, namaste. Bright, Bridget, blessing. Thank you all for tuning in to this healing hearth fire. I'm trying this live stream at yet another place in my home. And I, it does appear that it's working. I'm seeing hearts and likes and comments, and I'll have a chance to look at all the comments as um, right after we're done with this, I will go to my main computer where I can see the comments better. And, and if you have those in need for healing, you can continue to put them into the fire because what I'm going to do now is add some more to the fire. So I add some sacred oak to the fire. And oak is a important um, plant in many spiritual traditions. And I live in an oak forest. So therefore, I have the opportunity um, to have a ready supply, courtesy of Mother Nature, um, as the 
um, oak, old branches fall off and trees die. Um, we do some harvesting here of the oak and we add it to our wood supply and we supplement our heat with hearth fire heating. And sometimes we've had to completely um, use this hearth fire to heat our entire home. But most of the time, um, we're doing a combination of our furnace as well as with this. Now we live in a forest, so we have a lot of trees here that are helping with um, the carbon situation. You know, you burn a lot of fires, there's carbon footprint and that type of thing. How do I justify having a hearth fire? Well, I'm caring for 200 acres of Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve that's right down the hill from my house and 33 acres of my home um, where I live with my husband and our home is also adjoining that big forest preserve and we uh, consider it as a privilege to be able to be out here in this rural area and um, we clearly are keeping the forest in good ways so that it helps with that whole carbon situation that humans too often are uh, putting more carbon into the air and getting rid of forest instead of um, sustaining forest and planting new forests. So we do um, forest management and um, we honor the forest as sacred place. So I have a big oak log in here. Um, one of the, some of you know from workshops I've done, podcasts I've done, presentations I've done, rituals I've done, that I have a number of divine alignments and one of those uh, divine alignments is with the Celtic goddess Bridget, Brige, Brigantia, Brigitte, and she um, is a multifaceted goddess, but a goddess of fire and healing fire. So, Bridget Fire, come inspire. Bridget Fire, come inspire. Bridget Fire, come inspire. A chant not only good for Imbolc or Bridget's Fest, um, Bridget's Day at the beginning of February in the Northern Hemisphere, but I work with Bridget year round and part of my Bridget work is hearth fire work. I'm doing a podcast tomorrow, Sunday, November 22nd. Nature Mystic is the name of my Sunday late afternoon, early evening podcast every week. And I am going to do healing with sacred fire. So not only working with bonfires and hearth fires, but working with candle, flames, sunlight, and fire in the head, creative fire. So if you want to tune in, you can go to my Selena Fox updates page. That's where I'm live streaming this and you will see a photograph of a Bridget altar that I crafted and an image of Bridget in her sacred healing fire aspect, holding a sacred flame. And with that post, you will see the link to get to my podcast. On Sundays every week is Nature Mystic, which are encore podcast. And I did a series this spring on spiritual healing with the elements and had the sense as we were planning podcast for November to repeat the series. And that was a good choice. Decided that, you know, weeks ago because clearly the COVID situation is getting worse in many places. In addition to taking good measures to keep ourselves and our loved ones safe and to stop the spread, it is a good time to find ways to work for healing ourselves and others. And so as I conclude this pop-up live stream, I invite you to join me and a final healing working in this 
is to send healing to humankind as a whole, to planet Earth as a whole, and to that larger circle of nature of which we are all part. Be well, be well, be well, be well, be well. So be it. Thanks to all of you who have joined me live and who'll be watching me later. And if you haven't yet um, discovered our Circle Sanctuary Network podcast, CSNP Facebook page, I invite you to take a journey over after this podcast ends and take a look, like it, follow it, and you'll find out not only about free online workshops, audio workshops that I do, but also the very many podcasts that are being done by our whole podcasting team. And why are we at Circle Sanctuary doing an internet radio network? We think it's really important to get information widely available, and to be part of spiritual solutions for a healthier world than um, contributing to the toxic pollution. So I hope you will join us there. Our schedule of upcoming podcasts, as well as our main archives of past podcast is at the Circle Sanctuary website, www.circlesanctuary.org. And look under CSNP, and you will not only find in the main part podcasts coming up and ones that have happened more recently, but we have some other websites um, that are linked to that page that will take you to a whole host of other podcasts, workshops, discussions, rituals, specials that we have done. I've started live streaming my Wednesday night podcast, Nature Spirituality. So you'll find some of the video um, versions of those podcasts right here at the Selena Fox Updates page. If uh, you haven't already done so, you may want to get on Circle Sanctuary's monthly e-bulletin list and learn about other online events and opportunities that we have. And we're getting ready for the Yuletide and I have all sorts of things I'll be doing and Circle Sanctuary will be having several different online events. I'm doing the longest night, Winter Solstice Eve, on um, the internet this year instead of in person as I've been doing since the 1970s when I first started doing solstice celebrations and rituals. Thank you all for tuning in. May you be well, may you be safe. And for those of you in the USA, as we move into this time leading up to American Thanksgiving, Take some time out and reflect on what you are thankful for and connect with the sacred, with source, according to your own tradition and give thanks. Even when things are challenging, we can find things within the midst of that to be grateful for and interestingly enough, by taking some what I call gratitude moments that can help boost ourselves energetically, emotionally, mentally, physiologically, and spiritually, and help us deal with the many inputs we have opportunities to do. Thank you all for tuning in, and may you have a blessed day or night, depending on where you are. Thanks for being part of this and thanks to the sacred fire, may your healing continue to be in us and with us and with those 
who we have sent healing blessings to today and in times to come. So be it.